So if you watch part one of this video, I'll link it here, go watch that first. I basically went on a tirade about why breaking out of boxes is a bad idea. That being said, I do want to explain in a little bit more detail how we can add more boxes to our boxes, so to speak, and how that's the real trick to breaking out completely. And so today I'm just going to take one area of the guitar and I'm going to show you how you can layer so many different ideas in just this one area near the pentatonic scale and how that can transform your playing and give you an endless amount of things to play on the instrument. So we're going to be on in the key of A and we're going to start. Our bass box is our plain pentatonic scale. This is the first layer, basically the first box. <laughs> A shape you all probably already know and then the next layer that everyone knows as well is adding the blue note adding the flat five and then we have this scale that's the simplest form of our first kind of two layers of this whole thing now the next thing i want to do is start to add things that are not scales to move things away for a bit so basically we have scales, we have arpeggios, we have chords, and we have chromatic tones. Now, scales, uh, chords, and arpeggios are really the same thing, but I think about them differently, and I'll explain why as we go. But the first thing I'm going to do is layer on an arpeggio, and I'll show you how that fits over this same shape. Now, when it comes to the blues, if we're on the one chord, the A, that A7, we often think about an A dominant seven as our chord, and so we're going to play an A dominant seven arpeggio. Now, if we play in this same exact area, all right, the same blues area, blue box, blues box area, we are going to play this shape for the arpeggio. Now you're going to notice that this last note, the major third, I played it here and I played it here. Whenever I'm learning arpeggios and I'm learning them in an area, I play every note that I can reach and that way I know whenever I'm playing, I have an idea of where those notes are and what's actually available to me. So one more time, the whole shape. As soon as possible, not yet, but as soon as possible, we're going to stop playing it in that straight line because that's going to be very uh, obvious and very predictable and very boring if you're just soloing like this. You don't want to do things like that, but we're going to get to that eventually. Now we have three layers. We have our pentatonic scale, we have our blue scale, we have our uh, dominant seven arpeggio. The next thing I'm going to add is some chords and chords and arpeggios are the same thing. But usually on the guitar, because of the way things are laid out, we don't play our chords and arpeggios the same exact way. Okay, that's just not usually how we do things. So the chord I'm going to add now is not something that I invented, but I've never seen anyone teach this whatsoever, ever. I'm going to show it to you right now. I'm going to show you one way of doing this. And that is a major triad mixed with a dominant triad and putting them together in this one area. So our major triad for our... A chord, or our A chord is going to be this. You've seen that before. Now, this note right here, the tonic, this note can also be the seventh because it make it a dominant seven chord. So if we take this tonic note and slide it down to here, now we have this chord, which is basically a seventh, a fifth, and a third. So we have seven, fifth, third, and we have root, fifth, third. And we can also take the fifth and slide that up to a seventh. That will be here. Whoops, here. And now we have root, seventh, third. So whenever I'm thinking about a triad in the blues or a triad on a dominant chord, I see this and this and this. And 
And of course we can move these around the whole neck. So on and so forth, but we're just going to stay here for now. And so now you see that I have pentatonic scale, blue scale, arpeggio, and I have three different types of triads right here. So now I have like four, five, however many layers. And I'm gonna show you how to make music with this in a second. Let's just keep following me with this logic. The next thing I'm going to do is add another pentatonic scale. I'm going to add the major pentatonic scale. I covered the major pentatonic scale shape that I'm about to teach you in part one of this whole series. I'll link it here, but this is the shape. Watch that video if you wanna learn it again. So now I have that layer as well. And when it comes to that layer, I have the ability to play a few chromatic notes in there, a couple of blue notes. I have that now as well. And the final thing I'm going to add is just all chromatic notes. All the chromatic notes in this one area. Which is basically just every note that I can play right here. So I don't know how many layers that is now. Okay, we have the minor pentatonic scale, we have the major pentatonic scale, we have the minor pentatonic scale with the blue notes, we have the major pentatonic scale with chromatics, we have three different triads, we have an arpeggio, and then we have all the chromatic tones. We have almost 10 layers of things that we can play now. And that's, keep this in mind, that's all just in this one area of the guitar neck, that's all just over one chord in the blues without adding any other fancy theory stuff like transpositions and adding uh, different notes on top of it and, and all these other things. This is just the bare minimum we have in this area. And then if we understand each one of those things really well and we see them very, very well in all of their boxes and shapes, we can then just start weaving in and out of them seamlessly to, cre to create new ideas. So for example, <laughs> That was just me starting with a minor pentatonic note, sliding into the third. And now with this third right here, I know I can either do a major pentatonic type idea, or I can do a dominant seven arpeggio idea. So I have this or this. And the, the art of improvisation is deciding right on the fly in a blink of a second, which one you're going to end up doing. So I went with the dominant one. So I literally just walked up the scale starting with a slide. Uh, sorry, I walked up the arpeggio starting with a slide to the third. Now I'm back at the root and I'm now I'm thinking to myself, pentatonic scale. So our pentatonic scale keeping going would be this. But instead of doing that, I added the blue note. And then I went back to the third for our dominant arpeggio. Very simple idea. Or we could do something completely different. For example, we can take those uh, triad ideas that I showed you and mix them with the minor pentatonic scale. Right? I started with a minor pentatonic scale idea. And then I went straight into those triad ideas. Very, very simple. Now let's say I got to that note. The next thing that I can do is I immediately see that this note is the seventh of our chord. And so I can go right into our dominant seven arpeggio and think of some different ideas. Dominant seven arpeggio. Now maybe from here I want to go into a major uh, a major pentatonic scale idea. I apologize, guys. When you're playing and when you do this for enough time, you don't even think about what it's called anymore. It's just underneath your fingers. So I'm having to think about this in real time and explain it to you. But from here, right now I'm going to go into a major. Uh, Pentatonic scale idea. And end with a major triad idea. So 
you see I'm mixing major, I'm mixing minor, I'm adding in chords and arpeggios and all of that stuff. And don't forget all of the chromatic tones because again, we can play any of these notes. And if we know what we're doing, we can make any of those notes work in this context as well. So for example, continuously just weave through all these different things. You can essentially do that nonstop all day long. And keep in mind, I didn't even add any of the other stylistic things you can do. Like for example, switching to playing chords, like actual chords and all of that information. I didn't add anything like that whatsoever. I didn't add for the most part, any dyad ideas. which you can also do as well. And I also didn't add any shifting ideas. And nothing like that I added. So I hope you can see that if we just spent a lot of time learning all of these boxes, eventually there's just so much overlap that there is no boxes left. There are no boxes left. There are just different ideas that you can start to work in between and work through. Of course, we're going to have this same approach, but we're going to do it over a dominant chord for the blues, we're going to do it over major chords, minor chords in every single position. And it may seem like a ton of work, but as you do this more and more, it gets easier and easier. Because for example, let's say we learn all these ideas in this position in the key of A. Whatever, we learn all those different ideas. And then when we want to go to the four chord, we can take those same ideas and just shift them up to right here. Okay. Shift them back down here for the one chord. And then on top of that, when we learn how to do all of the things for the four chord in this area, I'm not gonna show you all of them, but for example, you have your same idea as your chord. You can play it arpeggiated. You can do your other chord ideas. You can do your pentatonic scale ideas. You can do your major pentatonic scale ideas. When we learn all of that stuff right here and connect it to the one chord ideas, then we can do the same thing in other places as well by reversing it, if that makes sense. Anyway, I, I, I know I'm starting to get away from the topic. You're probably getting a little bit confused at this point, so that means we should probably stop. But the whole point is to just show you that this is not difficult. It's not hard. It's just a matter of taking some time with a very good approach to this topic. Someone who knows what they're doing, books that know what, how to explain this stuff, and just one thing at a time, learning these ideas. start to do things like that and see all of these possibilities, then eventually we can weave in and out of them very simply. And that is the ultimate way of actually breaking out of boxes. It's just learning more stuff and learning ways to connect them all. So give some of that thought a try. Whatever you happen to know on guitar, it doesn't matter what it is, whatever you happen to know, just start to see everything you know in one area and start to see how you can move in between those things and connect them to different things. And that will be a good start to this. And eventually as you learn new things, make sure to layer them on top of the things you already know. And eventually you'll just know how to play and you'll have your own style.